am Doug, and this is a podcast about knitting and spinning and all the beautiful things you can create with yarn and wool. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico and where we have a lot of sunshine and I love my beautiful desert. So, but you want to hear what I've been up to in the past two weeks. Let's start with my cardigan. I have finished my copycat cardigan. I have told you that I had purchased a cardigan in a store. It was on sale. It was cheap yarn, but I love the design and I... So I wanted to replicate it. I went to Germany this summer. I went to my favorite yarn store there, which carries Lana Grossa, and I found a yarn which I wanted to use. It's called Lala, Harry Lala Berlin by Lana Grossa. And I ended up knitting it up with a another yarn that I had in stash because just with this I didn't like knitting with it so but holding it with this one which I had in my stash it was really ancient I'm sure it's not available anymore but um, this worked up great together I finished the sweater in a week no wizardry involved, just 10 millimeter needles. These needles were big and uh, alone for the back of the cardigan, it, I had only 50 stitches on the needles, even though it's huge. So let me show you. Here I am. Here's the cardigan and the sleeves are tight. And this neck, um, whatever it's called, ribbing, shawl, collar section is knitted at the same time with the front pieces and you knit, I knit it, <laughs> just uh, a little bit past the shoulders. I grafted both collar halves together seamed it up with the neck of the back. I put it on and I realized that I had not given it enough fabric in the back. So what happened was it was kind of pulling it up because there was just not enough give back there. And um, so I had to undo all of that, which was not really a big deal. It was just a little bit of a pain. But then I added at least three inches, maybe even four. That's how much extra fabric I felt I needed and did it, but added it all. I mean, put it all back together and um, now it's fine. What I did for the shoulders was a... Uh, short row shaping and then I did a three needle bind off. The stitch pattern is a um, knit one, purl one and then repeat it so they line up in the next row and, um, so, and then you reverse that. That was for the main part. Sleeves I knit in stockinette and just on the last wrong side, I knit it as well. So I have a garter ridge as a, a, instead of a ribbing, I mean, kind of like as an edge here, and then I cast off knit wise. I, so the stitches were, I didn't mention, I picked up the stitches here and knit it down and added, did some decreases here. And what else can I tell you? This section, the color section was um, made. So I have two garter ridges followed by a knit row. I mean, visually, so it's reversed on this side. 
And I thought I didn't need to do that because I thought, oh goodness, that's gonna be a lot of purling also. I don't really mind, but then I thought I have to pay attention too much. And I tried just to knit the front and knit the back row, but it pulls together a lot more than this. That was very interesting. So I had to rip back and start over once I realized that, which was no big deal. Yes, this thing, I am very happy with it. I love the fabric. It's really like a winter, chilly mornings, throw on kind of garment. I don't, I don't mind that it doesn't have buttons. I don't need buttons necessarily. And my daughter also loves it so much. So what I did, I gotta take it off, it's too warm. So what I did was I, well, she, I mentioned that before. She is very much into, she's not very much into colors. So I remember, dang, I have this yarn in a sweaters quantity. I had, well, it's also vintage ancient stash, deep stash. This is a, a cotton polyamide blend and it's very, it's almost, it doesn't look like that to me. I, I would have guessed that it's kind of like a rayon or a viscose con content because it has a little bit of a texture and it seems to have a lot of drape. So I thought, great, that would be great to hold together with this Lala Berlin yarn. And I so I looked up online what colors they have, and they do indeed have an off-white available. And so what I will do, don't tell, I will make one of these for Fiona for Christmas. And um, my I already ordered the yarn at my at that yarn store in Germany, and uh, my mom's gonna bring it when she comes soon. Yes, Oma is gonna come just before Thanksgiving. Hooray! So another copycat cardigan for Fiona. And um, in case you did not see the original, this is what it looked like, looks like. Not my preferred color. But you see the stitch pattern a little bit better. And also for the sleeves, they did a one by one, a one by one rib, which I didn't want to do. I did mine stockinette. That seemed to be unnecessary with a very, you know, a fuzzy yarn where you don't hardly ever see, hardly see the stitch at all. Well, I did it in the main part, but uh, whatever. I was, I thought stockinette would be fine. That was the cardigan. What else? Oh, yes. You need to know I finished that in a week and I finished it on the weekend getaway to the Taos Wool Festival, which was really fun. I thought I was going to wear it on uh, Sunday, uh, but it was so warm and such a pleasant day that I didn't even need a cardigan and I had brought uh, uh, my shawl and I wore it maybe for an hour, the southern shawl, and it was just really nothing wooly. Uh, everything, all the wooly stuff was too warm, but it was nice. Great. Um, so what's next? I have worked on the Daylin sweater, Daylin pullover by Isabel Kramer which I am working on in my own hand spun. I was attempting to make, to transform the pattern into a V-neck. I did some weird math and I thought I had figured, I figured it out um, because the tricky part was so you cast on all of your stitches for the whole neckline. And then you shape for the front with short rows. So you will need more stitches for the front to accommodate the, the longer drop for the V-neck. 
So I did some weird math and it did not at all work out because I, I thought I just, I just do what I think is going to be the right thing and I'm just going to knit it and then I'll see if it works and maybe I'm a stitch off then I can fudge it but I was not one stitch off <laughs> let me show you how much I'm off because that's how many stitches I have too many I already pulled the needle out because this front, this is the front that goes from the tip of a, the v-neck opening to the raglan. So when you add up the two halves, the stitches, I, right now I have the stitch count of the back. So I should be already together, which I'm not at all, obviously. So I will count everything and see how I need to adjust my stitch count and then I will restart. So the yarn that I'm using is my hand spun as I said and this is what I call the lint yarn because I started spinning it and I didn't really like it too much. I thought the color was boring. I wanted to go a different route because I'm usually into the bright. So I thought, oh, let's do something a little more subtle, lots of naturals and a few blips of color. But once I spun it, it was just really kind of drier lint. Drier lint, it morphed melted into that um, because it's about maybe 80 or 90 percent natural colors and the, then there are these hints of blues and greens, apricot. Um. So here's the thing, spun and in the skein, blah, kind of boring, but once I started knitting, again once you work, you can really appreciate the individual the, the, in every stitch as you work it. You can appreciate these subtle color changes. And you can see it in the big picture a little bit here that there is a variation in there. But let me hold this up to you. And you, I mean, I just adore stuff like this when there is a black spot or here the jeans blue. It's nice after all. Okay, so I'm back and forth between liking and not liking it, but now adjusting the pattern and starting over and hopefully by the next podcast in two weeks, I will have again a little bit of a sweater progress for you. And I am also knitting this sweater for my daughter out of a Zia Wool's base which is called Mesa. It's a blend of alpaca, merino and 10% uh, silk and I have made the same sweater out of a bright apple green for myself and this is the color that I came up for my daughter. It's a custom dyed colorway which I named Nightfall and I picked it up the other day and just started working a little bit on the sleeves to get those going and once I really devote some time to those I'm sure it's going to be finished pretty quickly. Of course I also do need to finish the neckline, add the ribbing for that, that's going to be last. That's Fiona's sweater. So what else have I been working on? I have to show you my little basket here, which I've been carrying around to wherever I'm working. And yes, you see that, right? It's a Christmas lining, but isn't it cute? I just like this basket. But as a counterpoint, I have I'm carrying this around, which is not even big enough to hold a project. That's why it's empty, but it's my totally favorite Halloween fabric of all times. And if you have this, 
Would you share with me, please? I love it so much. I don't know what happened. I They're all gone. All the bags I made with this. I should have kept a sock size bag, at least. Because that's what we do. Halloween socks, right? Which brings me to the next project. I have started Halloween socks. And the story is that I dyed up this colorway on the day before I went to the Taos Wool Festival last weekend. And it was, I brought it to Taos, still wet on a draped over a hanger. And I wanted to, I wanted all my friends that I went with, um, we were a total of five. I wanted everybody to have a skein like a 50 gram skein and uh, a 20 gram mini for a contrasting heel, toes, ribbing, whatever everybody but he picks. And, but we only, only on Sunday did we have the time, Sunday morning we had the time to split the skeins because finally they were dry enough and I had them in the sunshine and overnight in the warm bathroom and thank goodness. So Saturday, I could indeed start these babies and I have named the Halloween colorway Halloween in Taos I just came up with it for the trip this is a one-of-a-kind and this is called slime a neon neon with a few dark spots speckles and it's in combination with this, I think it's just perfect. So we're, we're I, I'm not sure that I'm gonna finish these before Halloween this year. I'll try, but not sure if it's gonna happen. But I told my friends also that you know, no pressure, of course. And we all said that we were going to wear the socks next year when we go back to Taos for the Wool Festival. So my Halloween socks. And what else? Oh, yes, I can tell you something about the needles. I almost forgot. So this is my Sundancer base, by the way, which is, I think, a, fa a fairly common um, sock yarn base. It has about 460-ish yards and it's a merino nylon, superwash merino nylon blend, 100 grams per skein. And I, that for this base, because it's so light, and I want a dense fabric. I prefer that on my socks. That's why I do. That's the only yarn that I go down a needle size for. So I'm using 2.0 needles. I had originally planned to knit these socks on magic loop two at a time. I thought that would give me greater chance to get them done on time for Halloween. But so my problem ended up being that the the because the, the needles are so thin and the, the cable is almost as thick as the needle, and I'm with me knitting so tight, so it was so hard to uh move those stitches around because it's almost like you push, like you push around, you push your stitches around on a needle and it's the longer loop too, because yeah, for two socks at a time. So I quickly gave up on that. I had knitted the ribbing on the DPNs anyway. And then I started doing the, the magic loop and I got fed up with that so fast. So now I'm back to my traditional DPNs. My other pair of socks that I have going is my pair with hand spun yarn. And I told you in the last episode that I have 
that I got the impression, so I went for a fingering weight, which turned out great. I'm knitting these on my standard sock needle, which is 2.5 millimeters. And I, but I thought that the yarn was, could have been plied a little more tightly. I mean, it's a balanced yarn, but I don't know, I wasn't so sure. So I decided, well, I've spun one half, I'm gonna spin the other half with more twist in the singles and then ply it with more twist. And hopefully, um, I mean, at least what I'll have is two pairs of socks, two different pairs of socks, but I will totally have, totally be able to really test if there's a difference in how they wear. And um, so I was finished with this guy then, of course, I did not have the second um, half of the wool spun yet. So I did that and uh, I have my second ball of yarn ready to go. And as you can tell, it's really plied. Maybe you can tell, maybe not. I hope you can. But it's plied, it's plied, um, I mean, it has a lot more twist. So it's almost pearly. And I have to give, give credit uh, to this, for this to um, Tina of um, Elfenwolle in uh, Germany, who uh, is amazing and knits all her, almost all of her socks are from handspun and she wears a lot of her handspun in her sweater too. She's a dyer of mainly uh, fiber for hand spinning. And um, so she was talking about this and she was also mentioning that you lose a lot of yardage when you ply more tightly, which of course, once you think about it, makes total sense. So I'm a little worried that I might run out of yarn for my second socks and I decided that I will use what I have left over from the first sock. I will use that on the leg of the second sock just to be sure that I don't run out because so I'm going to be able to to really use the, the differently plied yarn on the foot of the second sock, all of it. So these will go on the needles shortly. I also have in my little basket a pair of fingerless mitts, the first of more to come for the High Desert Studio Tour that I mentioned. It is a studio tour in my neighborhood and um, artists open their house for people to stop by and see where they work, what they do, and possibly get some Christmas shopping done. And I'm going to have mainly yarn, but I'm also usually um, offering zippered bags in different sizes and also fingerless gloves. Usually from hand spun, and I know it's a crazy amount of work and I probably don't charge enough, but it's okay. But I have to say that I have made so many of these that I really need a very fun yarn or I'm probably not going to do any at all. So this was a fun yarn. You saw this on a previous episode. I had just spun it and I was curious how that's going to look like with that yellow. And I think they turned out cute. Just the end left on these guys. So on another note, I pulled out a project to show you so I can frog it because I I'm bored with it. So, so, and here, finally, what I am working on, or I was working on many months ago, it's the Color Affection, beautiful pattern. 
I know has nothing to do with the pattern. It has everything to do with my yarn choice, not necessarily the yarn itself, but the colors that I picked. I picked all the colors that I really love. And I think they're great. The lime and the aqua turquoise with the gray looks great. But I really, I really got bored so quickly and I'm not picking it up anymore. So I'm thinking it's due to the colors that I need a little more fun pizzazz something on this i haven't touched this in months so i saw someone use a slightly speckled yarn for this and i'm thinking even if i keep the gray as a solid i could speckle this and just make it more fun that way. It's really, it was boring me, I think. That's why I haven't picked it up. And I do love the base. It's my Sugarloaf base. And it's really makes beautiful shawls, makes a beautiful soft fabric. It's 100%. It's a light fingering, 100% uh, superwash yarn. So yeah, again, I'm gonna just rip this and um, put it back into skeins and over dye and hopefully I'll enjoy this more because the shawl is gorgeous and I really wanna have that. That's the story of the shawl. Color affection. On another note, I have purchased yarn for the girl's best friend by Isabel Kramer and I have decided I'm planning I'm not really sure about the details yet but I have decided that I want to make a knit along First Zia Wool's Knit Along. And by Zia Wool's, I mean in the group. We're going to meet up in the group and share progress in the group and the finished items. But I'm not, you don't have to do this with my yarn. I don't. I won't. <laughs> I um, love I love my own yarns, but I also love to, to work with uh, what other dyers come up. And here's what I have bought. What do you think? Isn't that glorious? Oh, I love these so much. So I purchased these from MJ Yarns. It's their one U fingering and U spelled written like uh, the U, the sheep U. And this is the colorway jade. This is Jubilee. And this one is Sardonyx. So rich, absolutely fabulous. Okay, so let's knit this together. You want to join me? Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. I will open a thread in the group for Oh, I think how do you all do this, you podcasters out there? You I need a chatter thread, right? And then I need a thread for the finished object. Yes, let's do it this way. And I am not decided on how long we should let this go. I was thinking, initially I was thinking maybe January, but I thought, oh, maybe everybody loses steam if it goes so long. I mean, maybe you want to knit it 
as a Christmas present for your best girlfriend, right? So I will come up with a date or if you have any thoughts on that, please let me know in the group. And please, for, for sure, do join the Zia Wolves Ravelry group, okay? I would love to see you there. And then we will work on this together. Wonderful. So I bought the yarns, I bought my yarns in Taos at the Wool Festival. So to talk a little bit about that, I went there with four of my really good knitting friends and we were all super excited. We headed out early on Saturday morning. We spent the day at the festival. We had an Airbnb um, where we uh, spent the night, which was super, super nice. Great, great little house. And um, then we stayed until Sunday afternoon. We also visited the yarn store in Taos, the yarn store on Mooncat Fiber on, on Bent Street, where I... That's the place that um, carries uh, my Zia wools. And um, then we, we headed back after a nice lunch and one last yarn store visit. It was really such a fun weekend. It was like a, I almost want to say like a mini retreat, you know, because it's just different than when you spend the night somewhere and you fix your own meals and, get to talk so much more and differently you spent all that time in the car and then the evening we sat and knitted together it was just so fun and and different from from how it is when you're at home and uh so it was such a such a great great trip and great times and i'm sure we're going to do it again next year Oh, and we did go, I wanted to tell you that, we did eat at the Love Apple in Taos, which is such a nice restaurant. We ate there last year already. It used to be an old little church that they um, converted into this restaurant with like super uh, local foods, lots of organic stuff, kind of like things with a little modern spin. Like I had the tacos with fried avocado. So if you ever go to Taos in northern New Mexico, make sure you have dinner at the Love Apple. You will not regret it. So that was our meals, our one main Fancy, wonderful meal. And then there was, of course, more stash enhancement. This is what I brought from the yarn store. It's called a lamb's tail. It's a blend of superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. And it's a color morph fuchsia to turquoise shadow. And I am thinking a shawl to kind of try to, I'm not going to Navajo ply this. I've never done it. And I'm also worried. I don't want it to be too thick. So I'm probably just going to ply it and, but still try to preserve the color gra gradation and then have a nice shawl with this. Can't wait. Then I went at the festival. I went to a booth where I had shopped last year already and I bought this beautiful yarn that I made two Graham hats from. Both hats I changed from a slouch to a more fitted shape. And I can show you mine. The other one is in Germany with my brother. So I, where's the back? I'm not sure. Here. And I was wearing it just the other day on the morning, the cold, cold morning when I went to the balloon fiesta. 
that's what happened last week here in Albuquerque. Super exciting for all of us. And you have to do this at least once every year to get up early and make sure you get to the to the uh, to to the balloon fiesta early, like around six would be great before the sun's up. It's usually cold. You get to wear all your warm stuff and then you go without breakfast and you have a breakfast burrito there and then people start um, with the balloons and uh, we were lucky so there was no wind so they actually did go up and it was just beautiful as always. So little detour, that's where I wore my hat. So uh, back to yarn purchases. So I went to their booth again because I knew I loved the yarn and I wanted to see what they had brought. They kind of vary what they have. And because they send out a batch of yarn and then they, um, and they have it processed into yarn and I mean a batch of wool, they're an alpaca farm. And um, so they don't always get the same stuff back. Uh, I mean, so it's totally identical, the yarn that they get back. So they, I knew they were probably going to have different stuff and, um, this year. And that's how it was. And I have bought yarn from them, but then as I wanted to put it with my in in my uh, yarn bin I saw that I still had some that I hadn't worked with from last year so now I do have several skeins of from these people and from that farm and they are the bluebird alpaca ranch in Colorado and the website is called bluebirdalpacaranch.openherd.com and they like I purchased all so sport weight because I'm thinking I was thinking of this hat and you I looked just the other day on Ravelry and I saw that um, you could also make the hat with just two colors. Maybe you move the stars up a little bit higher, or I'm not sure if you shorten the hat or what you do. I wasn't investigating and I don't even know if that's in the pattern, but maybe I'll do that too because I do like my hats uh, fitted. So let me show you all the yarns, all the colors that I have. I'm not sure how I will combine them because I didn't find any colors where I thought, oh, these will be perfect together, but I'm sure I'll figure out something. Like I said, they're all sport weight or what they call sport weight. And this is what I have. They're super yummy and soft with the alpaca. I love alpaca. Okay, so I tell you what's in them. This one is 100% alpaca. This guy is 85 alpaca, 15 silk. Ah, see, and I found this guy in the sale bin. They always have a very generously discounted sale bin for no apparent reason, nothing wrong with the yarns. And they explained to me that they just have you know, stuff that they only have single skeins left of, or maybe one or two, and maybe they don't have the base anymore or something, then they just put it, to, they mark it down and put it in the sale bin, like really nice discounts. So this is again, 100% alpaca. It has a hint of purple. I'm not sure if that's the natural or if it's dyed. No, it's probably dyed. Then this one is, again, alpaca silk. Alpaca bamboo, 75-25, love this blue. And I love this one also, it's called toffee. And it says, 
95 alpaca and 5% firestar. Isn't firestar a glitter stuff? I can't see glitter in this at all. But I love it. See, like these two or these two. So now that I showed you everything, I can start knitting. Right? It's always, it looks a little bit different in this skein. Oh, I almost forgot about this guy. Another one that I found in their sale bin, and you're not going to believe this, but this is a 100% baby alpaca lace. Very soft. 875 yards for $18. I mean, that's just amazing, right? Don't know what I'll do yet, but I'm sure I'll find something. Okay. Oh, I also picked something for myself, which is kind of my birthday present, which was a good while ago, from my mom because she... She said, go buy yourself something for your birthday. And I said, well, I'm going to spend my birthday money in Taos. And I found this at the Taos yarn store, Mooncat Fiber. It's a handmade bag. It's very generous size. I don't know if you can see, but this is how big it is. It has these metal things on the bottom. It has pockets on the outside, all the way around. Looks the same on both sides. I just love the 70s vintage look of this thing. And you could also use it as a weekender bag. It even has these zipper flaps. Kind of interesting way of construction. See that? And oops pockets and it says and I have not looked that looked that up online so you can give it a go and see if you find them it's the label says three numeric writing three green sisters so apparently she um she uses old fabrics so that's awesome. Love it. I have, other than that, just one more thing that I wanted to mention to you. Just from an artist's point of view, I wanted to show you this. I brought the postcard and it's it was the most amazing art in what? sorry i had some tech trouble i don't know maybe my phone was storage was full but this is what i wanted to show you look her up she makes gorgeous felt art karen waters art is her name and she makes these felted wet felted vessels absolutely amazing shapes and um i know her from the past she's a photographer and but she learned to do this and became such an accomplished creator in the past only two years that's truly amazing so i did forget more yarn goodness gracious how could i do this i have two more skeins that i really adore they're both even kind of in a weird way similar with their grays. But um, one of them has the pops of neon. And this is a yarn by Atomic Fiber Company. And this is the colorway Moon Shadow. It's an MCN blend of merino cashmere and nylon and yeah that's what you do before you go to a wool festival like a week before that you order a skein of yarn from etsy 
right? We all do this, I'm sure of it. Now, after the wool festival, I went to my yarn store here and I could not, um, I just had to get this. I'm not sure what it will be eventually, but I love the subtle color variation and it's a new base that they carry now and the company is called Wonderland Yarns and this one is also an 80 1010 superwash merino cashmere nylon but I'm sure it's a different base this seems to be more tightly twisted and the yardage is let's see I don't know Oh, 410, four ounces. So oh, interesting. So it's weight wise, it's a little bit more, but less yardage than the other one. So more tightly plied, apparently. Less yardage, but yeah. Does that make sense? Well, you know what I want to say, right? Okay, so let's wrap this up. I do want to thank you all for joining me. Thank you so much for watching, for listening to me talking about all my yarny adventures. And uh, I hope to see you all again in two weeks. And please, in the meantime, join the Ravelry group do say hello if you have an extra minute introduce yourself and if you want to join the knit along go and um, start chatting tell me what you think about how long it should go what would what you think what makes sense and um, it's going to be the first one that i'm hosting so please be a member of the group and please also uh yeah leave a comment and of course uh there will be a prize that i have to decide on i'm almost 100 percent sure that of course it's going to be a zia wool's yarn so i hope you all are going to have a wonderful next two weeks I, if you are interested in seeing a little bit more about uh, the wool festival in taos stay tuned i'm going to try to add a little bit of uh, footage to the um, to the video now so you get an idea of, of what i was talking about i'm looking forward to chatting with you again in two weeks bye bye where are you? What are you? Would you put it in our phone? Yeah. Put it in our phone. There'll be some times when the storms can roll in air. The water can run and cut off the whole damn thing. Lay up in my plans and wash away our sins. So we can now, oh, let's do it again. And again.
and the song by 